To paraphrase an old adage, give the IRS what belongs to the IRS, but don't give them more than that. There are lots of provisions in the IRS code, so use everything that pertains to you. Now here's a little gem buried in section 1041 of the IRS code book, the secret of giving depreciated assets to a spouse. It says, no gain or loss shall be recognized on a transfer of property from an individual to a spouse. The transfer is treated as a gift. The transferee has the transferor's basis. This is the only place the IRS allows an individual to receive an investment loss. If you gift assets that have depreciated in value to your spouse, the spouse receives the gift at your original cost basis. When your spouse sells the investment, they get to deduct the loss. If the assets are gifted to anyone else, for example a child or a grandchild, that person receives the gifted asset at its current fair market value. It works like this. Bill purchased stock in ABC Company for $100 a share in a taxable portfolio. He gifts the stock to his wife Martha when the stock has dropped to $50 a share. Martha later sells ABC stock for $25 and receives a $75 per share capital loss. The original cost of $100 minus the current value of $25. If Bill had gifted the stock to anyone else when the stock dropped to $50 a share, the cost basis would be $50 a share, not the original purchase price. And if the stock is later sold for $25 a share, the capital loss would be $25 per share. But if Bill decided to let his spouse inherit the stock rather than gift it to her, Martha's cost basis becomes the fair market value at the date of Bill's death and any capital loss disappears. More useful information is on the way, so subscribe to the Alhambra Investments channel.